Well, I was a teacher once, mm -hmm. uh, briefly. Mm -hmm. I was hired to be an adjunct professor yeah. at Regent University in Virginia uh, for a semester at their film department there. Okay. And I taught two courses. One was advanced uh, directing, and the other one was, in, I think they called it advanced screenwriting and uh, or editing. No, sorry, I got that backwards. It was advanced screenwriting and editing. Those were the two courses I taught. And I had never taught before, and I was actually put in at the last minute. So I wasn't well prepared. I was, was, I was sort of almost like a warm body that got put, put in the class. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, uh, so I did have a syllabus, but I ended up kind of sharing my war stories, you know, with the class and uh, everybody loved it. I was very popular, sure. I think, for a couple of classes. And, <laughs> and then I sort of drifted because <laughs> I didn't have the experience to really keep the keep it together as a true professor would i suppose but my war stories were interesting <laughs> so we're going to share some of those with you today yeah that's that's exciting and uh chris uh, uh, is it okay if i just mention um you know we're uh here uh because of the facilitation of greg wright who is uh, helping mm -hmm. get us going and yeah. greg we just want to give you a shout out today and thank you hey, for greg. your part that's <laughs> right no you're right yeah Greg is the, he's like the, the wizard there in, um, yeah. what's the name of the movie? Wizard, wizard of, Oz. of Oz. Yeah, the guy who's, who's uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, so Greg's the man behind the curtain, and he's yeah. making this possible for us to, to be going live and sharing it on all our channels, so we really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Yeah, so uh, go ahead, Chris. Well, I, um, I could start with the year 1988, when I made set out to make my first film and we we originally just we had the focus of how do you raise money for a film that was going to be the focus of today's facebook live still is the focus but if you want to ask questions about some of the right. aspect of filmmaking yeah definitely free. so in 1988 i had um set out to produce a movie in mexico and it's very low budget Forty thousand dollars was the total budget. Wow! And it was a forty-minute film. And where was I going to get the money? And that's kind of the theme of today. Where do you find the money to make an independent film? And in my case, I have tried many different avenues. And with my first film, I looked for donations. I looked for. Uh, well, as someone else has said, um, I became a beggar hmm. and I yeah. appealed for funds and they, the money just didn't come in. And I had another job. I had a full-time job at the time, a day job, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that was paying the bills. But my heart was in making this movie in Mexico. I was living in California at the time. And... My employer, <clears throat> he, uh, he was in favor of me making the film. I was doing it, <clears throat> excuse me, I was doing it with his blessing. Sure. Uh, but he said to me, look, if you can't, and he was actually going to loan me camera equipment that he owned, wow. 16 millimeter camera equipment. And he said, but if you can't come up with, you know, <clears throat> I forget if it was, so for some reason, the number 9,000 sticks in my mind. It was either 9,000 or $10,000. Okay. He said, if you can't come up with $9,000 by next week on this day at this time, I think, you you know, as far as I'm concerned as your employer and the man is going to loan you this film equipment, uh, camera equipment, you're going to have to hang it up. You were how old? <clears throat> you were how old then? I was uh, 36. Okay. Or 35. Okay and uh, about to turn 36. And so the days went by and no money was coming in. And I was looking at that deadline, the day before the deadline. And I said, what am I gonna do? Now, when I talk about what am I gonna do and you know my effort and everything, let me be very clear that I was praying. 
I was asking yeah. God for help. Right. And I had, for the previous five years before this, yeah. from 1983 to 1988, I had been developing the vision for this ministry of Messenger Films. Sure. And it was not an easy process. Mm. During those five years, <clears throat> excuse me, during those five years prior, leading up to 1988, I had worked delivering pizza, mm. I'd been an electrician's helper, I was, I had a growing family, and I, I, I went through a very, very difficult time, but I was convinced that the Lord had given me a vision. Sure, sure, you had a vision? I had a vision, yeah. just like Paul said, uh, when he, he wrote that, I will, I will not be disobedient to the heavenly vision. Right. He had a vision, Paul did, yeah. and I felt that I had a vision too. Right. Which had crystallized through a period of soul searching yeah. and Bible reading and prayer and fellowship. I, I, I invited others to speak into my life wow. um, as well, because one thing I did not want to do was embark upon something that was a fool's errand, to put it that way. I wanted to make sure that this would be divinely ordained. Absolutely. And I didn't want to be making something up because I had actually studied film before I became a follower of Christ. And had you know gone to a very prestigious film school. Yes. I was living in New York City, you know, struggling to make my mark. I was looking at moving out to LA and getting involved in the Hollywood scene when I was intersected in that approach by uh, a spiritual journey, a wow. spiritual influence that came into my life and which motivated me to seek uh, truth. Yeah, that's how I put it. I began asking the question, what is truth? and began searching for meaning and went through the world's religions, studied the major religions of the world, read their holy books. The last one I studied was Christianity. I became a believer. And then I said, well, I can't be a filmmaker now. The, you know, mm -hmm. How could I possibly serve God and be a filmmaker? And the sure. reason I came to that conclusion was that my whole approach to filmmaking had been so self-centered and ego driven. It was very, you know, very self-centered and very sure. self-serving. Right. So that when I decided, when I launched Messenger Films and decided, okay, now I'm gonna make films that will glorify the Lord, mm -hmm. I did not fully trust myself Wow. because of my history. I was afraid that maybe I was making this up. Mm. I was concerned that I was being too egocentric and so oh, forth. So it took time. It was a five yeah. year filtering process that right. took me up to 1988. You know, Chris, it's interesting. You know, we're made in the image of God. God mm -hmm. is a creator. You know, he, he is the all knowing, all wise creator of the universe. And we're made in his image. And I believe that each one of us have that creative capacity in some way. God wants us to be creators. And uh, God put that in your heart to be a creator, but to use for his glory. Yeah, and your first, your first kind of uh, stint at this was kind of personal ambition. Yeah, God had to transition that. Yes, into an, a desire to glorify Him through the creative processes in your life. That's right. He had and, to take you through that, and to see myself as a servant. Yeah, as after all, Jesus said, "He who would be the greatest among you must be the servant of all." Yeah, you know. So, and this was a total reordering and restructuring. And so we get to 1988, it was the summer, it was June, uh, a month before my, my birthday. And uh, I said, what am I going to do? Apart from all the prayers and everything else. Yeah, yeah. And I called up a friend in New York City who was in the advertising business. Sure. And I forgot the time difference, the three hour time difference. And uh, so I, I called him at, at uh, one or two in the morning, which I shouldn't have done anyway. Mm. Um, no, sorry, I called him at, at uh, five in the morning. So it was two in the morning his time. Yeah. No, wait, I got that back. <laughs> it was two in the morning California time, <laughs> okay. five in the morning his time. Okay. In any event, I woke him up <laughs> out of a sound sleep. Yeah. And maybe that helped because yeah. he said, what, what, what do you want? <laughs> Good time to call. <laughs> hey, I need some money. <laughs> and I need some money now. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm having a meeting here at 9 a.m. here in California. Wow. And if I don't have 
$10,000 or nine, I can't yeah. remember what it was. Yeah. I said, I have to call this off. And I had spoken to him a few months prior and he knew what I was doing. He said, <laughs> I could almost see him, you know, wiping his eyes. I said, okay, okay, I'll send you some money. I'll, and I said, you will? Yeah. He said, yes, I will. I said, you promise? Yeah, I promise. Okay, that's great. So I hang up the phone and I knew I could count on him. He was a good man. Wow. And sure enough, he came through. Did he? Yeah. And I went to that meeting. And to be honest with you, the people who were also going to join me at that meeting, they knew what I was going through and knew that I hadn't raised any money. And I don't think they were expecting me to have a much of a positive report. <laughs> but I came in and said, hey, I got the money. Wow. We're going to make this movie. Wow. And the midnight hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right at the end. So, you know, I what I've learned over the years is that for those who want to be filmmakers yeah i would say yeah sure go to film school you yeah. can learn a lot at film school but i'd also say search your heart yeah because if it's not in your heart right to brave uh yeah. you know the the um, outrageous things that can happen uh in life and when you set out to make a film there's just so many challenges you know and and, and chris excuse you me gotta have it in your heart and gut. That, that's just it and, and finding who we were really created to be yeah you know who, who does god want me to be and Greg made a good point about an article he was writing uh, recently. Uh, in fact, he said he wrote yesterday, but just discovering who we really are and make, mm -hmm. making sure we are authentic, that yeah. we are. Yeah. And sometimes it's really hard to find that that path. And, you know, yeah. and it, I think Greg makes a great point. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be hard, if, but if that's, I think, more if we get in our own way. Yeah, we can, and we do, and that's what we have to struggle, you know, with, that's struggle right. with a lot. The, the Bible says that God desires truth in the inward parts, you yeah. know, deep in the heart. Yeah. And and that's a private place, but hey, why not make it authentic? Yeah. Make it genuine. It's a lifelong challenge too, to continually strive to make sure we're staying in tune with what yeah. God wants. And I know you know this verse, I love this verse. Uh, yeah. oh God, search me yeah. and try me and, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Know yeah. my thoughts. Right. That's uh something that in our day and age, or maybe just as human beings, we have a hard time doing, which is mm -hmm. really allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and transparent. Yeah. Um but hey, to whom else should you be transparent than, yeah. right, than the one who made you? And he sees it all way. anyway. He sees it all anyway. <laughs> yeah, and and so so that was uh yeah. So going back to the war story theme of uh, raising money, that was kind of my baptism. Yeah. And and I said, listen, I I gotta I I gotta I gotta take some initiative here. I gotta yeah. take a, a, an action step. And of course he could have said no, my friend right. in New York. Yeah. He could have said no, but he didn't. Yeah. And thank goodness he didn't because I don't know if we'd be sitting here today if he had said no. And then folks, I'm, I'm just here to remind you, uh, I'm here with Chris Cruzen, um, director, producer, writer of the Puzzle Factory movie, trying to talking about uh, funding the movie and how uh, other movie projects have been funded in the past. So we're kind of starting at the beginning of Chris's career. So if you're just yeah. tuning in a little bit late, um, um, we're talking about war stories and, and just uh, what Chris adventures, adventures, adventures. adventures. Yeah. yeah. And we do have some links <clears throat> and, and feel free to ask any questions in the comment section. And Chris would be happy to answer those later, but we do have some links for funding. And as Chris already mentioned, you know, it, it really does take uh, funding. It takes somebody who uh, feels a burden uh, for a project or God might speak to, uh, you know, for this type of an endeavor. Mm -hmm. And uh, so maybe maybe somebody today will tune in and say, uh, this is what I've been looking for. I've been looking for an opportunity to fund something that is going to make a difference in the world. And, and uh, the Puzzle Factory, if you haven't heard the other interviews, uh, really deals with... Um, uh, mental disorder and right. uh, just your your personal struggle with that. So right. uh, it's it's I think it's a very needed, very needed uh, movie. And so the links are in the the um, comment section. Feel free to click those. You can go there. You can mm -hmm. uh, make a contribution today. So yeah, with that. So we're coming back to your first movie. You needed forty thousand dollars. They told you you needed at least nine thousand by a certain date. To get even to keep it going, to keep it going, to yeah. use the equipment they had, and at the midnight hour, uh, God impressed you to call somebody, and they gave you the money. And yeah, that's yeah. I mean that's a miracle in itself. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and then the whole process of making that first movie was one miracle after another. 
Um, but unless somebody wants to know more from yeah. that movie, I'll move on to the second. Do you, movie. Do you think that? So, so we're going on to second movie. But would you would would you say that was the most surprising source? Greg asks, uh, would that be the most surprising source of financial uh, help you ever received? Or no? Okay, so that was just no. like building. We're building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think the good question. The most, Thanks, Greg. The most uh, well, you could say. Um, awesome <laughs> uh, amazing story of funding would be how we made sabina k i think wow where sabina k being my most recent film the budget had because one thing i try to do with my work is i, I want to keep making the next film better than the sure. one before which is a i think a good thing a natural thing right. you, know, you want to improve and make it better and better right. better right and so start my first film had a budget of forty thousand dollars and Sabina K had a budget of uh, approximately eight hundred thousand dollars. A little bit of difference. <laughs> so, uh, and yet there wasn't a great deal of difference in where I was and uh, in my approach to making it. And perhaps it would help uh, whoever's watching to understand that uh, I'm not in the Hollywood system. I'm not part of a studio. Right. Um, and Messenger Films was actually incorporated as a 501c3, a not-for-profit right. corporation in the United States. So funding has to come in for our projects through charitable giving. Yeah. Which, by the way, I'm hoping you'll do today on yeah, with the puzzle. That factor, would be awesome. Because we have an Indiegogo campaign yeah. current. It has another less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to raise money that will allow us to hire an A-list actor right. for the lead role in yeah. that movie. Yeah. So your first movie, budget 40000 Yeah. You talked about Sabina K, which was your last one, just recently, you know, yeah. a year ago or two years ago now? Uh, no, more oh. like uh, four years ago. Where did the time go, Chris? I know. Okay, so that was that was 800000 The puzzle factor, I think you mentioned to me. Two million. Two million. Two million. Yeah. Which is still a low budget. Yeah, for a... For, yeah top of line movie right yeah which it will be yeah it will i believe be. that and so sabina k in some ways i was real the, the the i was really in not much of a different situation with sabina k than i was with the first film sure Ropa nueva para felipe the film in mexico mm -hmm. of hey i need money and if i don't get the money it it doesn't happen and it was also it needed to be a charitable contribution because we're 501c3 and I just was impressed to call a man who lives in Idaho, one of our donors. I knew him. I, he was a friend as well as a supporter of our ministry. Okay. And I said to him, hey, have you ever heard of Bill Bright? Of course I have, he says. Bill Bright was the founder of Campus Crusade right. for Christ. Yeah. Um, have you heard of the Jesus film that they created, produced? Uh, yeah, of course. I said, would well, you know that that movie was largely underwritten. The cost of making that movie was largely underwritten by a Texas millionaire named Bunker Hunt. Yeah. And he said, no, I didn't know that. Silver guy? Yeah, the silver guy. And he and his brother, the Hunt brothers, brothers right. nearly cornered the silver market. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think the U.S. government maybe pulled the rug out from under them. Yeah. I, I don't know what happened exactly. At the end, it was. At the end. <laughs> yeah. But the point being, for at least for my yeah, illustration sure. is that this guy bunker hunt he had a lot of money and um bill bright approached him and asked for help and bunker and his wife very importantly wow. uh, agreed and they gave uh, crusade campus crusade a gift of one million dollars okay and that's how the jesus film got me no that's the first i've heard of that yeah wow. largely it was from that one gift and i said to my friend how would you like to help me make a movie for the Balkans and um, that, uh, you know, we need $800,000 and you, you can help me make that movie. And we, we're making this movie to have a spiritual impact in a part of the world that has been torn by war and, and strife and ethnic uh, conflict sure. where there's a, a need for the gospel. And he said, well, let me pray about it. And uh, he said, I actually have some land where we're drilling for oil. <laughs> <laughs> and if we, if we, if we, you know, if we hit a, if we hit, hit some oil, I'll see what I can do. Wow. Well, nothing happens. No word from him for several weeks. 
and I, I'm a little nervous. But yeah. again, I'm not holding my breath because right. I knew it was a long shot to start with. Right. And I'm asking other people for their help. But I get a have a dream one night. And in the dream, I see this friend writing out a check to Messenger Films. Like, and I, like, what, what, how much is it for? I can't quite make it. <laughs> oh, come on, brain. Get, zoom in there a little bit. So I, I, I couldn't, couldn't make it out. But he, he was clearly writing out a check for Messenger Films. I wake uh, up. So that's my cue. I'm going to call him. Sure. He hadn't called me. Yeah. A few weeks had gone by, so I called sure. him. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah, how you doing? So listen, um, I had a dream about you last night. Really? He said, yes. And in, in the dream, I saw you writing out a check to Messenger Films. Silence. Well, brother, this sort of reminds me of someone who not too long ago called me up and said he had had a dream that I was supposed to <laughs> buy his ministry a school bus. <laughs> And I said to him, if God wants me to buy you a school bus, he'll give me a dream to do that. Or he'll tell me in some way, sure. clear way to yeah. do that. Yeah. And until he does, I'm sorry. Yeah. But I'll just have to get my own confirmation of what you're saying. Sure. And I said, oh, yeah, well. So in other words, I said, but what about that oil? Well, we haven't found any oil. And I said, okay. Um, and he said, in fact, we just got money going out. It's going out. It's going out. We can't. We don't have anything coming in. Nothing's coming in. Huh. And if he could have seen my face, you know, it would have been, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I was just very <laughs> devastated by it all and yeah. hung up the phone and kind of moped about for a while. And then my good wife said, Husband, we need to pray. We need to pray and we need to ask God for a benefactor. Yeah. We need to ask, I said, but he was a benefactor or he could have been. Good to have a good wife, isn't it? It is. It is. And I have a good wife. Yeah. So we would take an evening walk. We were living in Belize at the time. Very hot. Yeah. But in the evenings, it cools down a bit. Nice to go out for a walk. And we're walking, praying for a benefactor. And not too many days later, my daughter had come to visit us with her husband. And we had been out all day. Come back to discover a message on my answering machine from this friend in Idaho, who says, well, brother, do you have an account at Raymond James? Well, this is actually his recording. He's not okay. talking to me. Okay. If you don't, you need to open one up because my wife and I have decided we're going to make a gift in stock to Messenger Films. Wow. And that gift ended up being in cash at the equivalent of about $600,000. Wow. Yeah. And so, get out your checkbook. <laughs> well, no, we go to Indiegogo, right? Absolutely, Indiegogo. yeah. The you link, can do something similar. The link is right down in the comment section. And, you know, uh, this this is, uh, I, I really believe that God has laid this on your heart to make this movie, Chris. I really, I just, I've been thinking more and more about it and just thinking about the lives, uh, you know, yeah. that would benefit. And who knows? I mean, who knows? Maybe the American Medical Association would pick it up. Maybe it would get promoted in places. Unity. God knows where this film's going to go. Yeah. But I, there's I a need out there. There's, there's a, a need out there. Somebody. Yeah. God's going to use somebody to make yeah. a way. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. And I see the the value of the film could be with it, it could be. I, I believe it would be much more than that. But it could be just to reach one person. That's how I look at things. Yeah. God is extravagant. We th sometimes right. perhaps think that God is stingy, you know, and he right. has to guard his resources carefully because yeah. so many demands on my time and my money. Yeah. But God doesn't think that way. God, no. I can't believe for one moment God is that way. And just no, as it's a, as a, is impossible for a human being to create an acorn, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's the same level of difficulty to create a, a galaxy. Absolutely. But for God, they're equal, you know? Right. And so yeah. this is not too hard for God. No. And I and I truly believe, I truly believe that the movie is going to touch many, many hearts. The puzzle mm. factory I'm talking about. Right. I, I happened to watch an old classic film just two nights ago called uh, The Birdman of Alcatraz mm. with Burt Lancaster. It's been a long time, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
and uh, I'd seen it once before years ago. Beautifully made film by one of my favorite directors, John Frankenheimer, excellent director. Wow. Uh, all these people are, <laughs> you know, long past. As my wife likes to say when we watch uh, Turner Classic Movies, she says, can you imagine? They're all dead now. They're yeah. All dead. <laughs> but, um, but a great movie. And uh, my heart and mind went to my son, Daniel, who right now is in a mental hospital. A bit like, or not unlike, um, the Burt Lancaster character, Robert Stroud, the Birdman of Alcatraz, sure. who found himself in solitary confinement. He, my son's not in solitary confinement in a prison. Don't no. misunderstand me, but he is institutionalized. Yeah. And, and his life is just, you know, withering in some ways. He's locked away. Somewhat in isolation by virtue of his illness. Yeah. And yet I know my son. I know that uh, when I give him a hug, I'm hugging not right. just my son. I'm hugging my fellow human being. Um, and, um, and, I, and he feels the warmth. You see, he's not allowed to get a hug in the mental hospital. He's not. No, they, they won't. Be, according to protocol or rules, he doesn't get a hug, you know. Um, and, and anyway, Robert Stroud in, in prison in, in Leavenworth and later in Alcatraz, he, um, he, he found a little sparrow, a little mm. bird that lost its way in the prison yard and he began to take care of that little bird and he and he it became his pet and he trained it and that led to him uh and other prisoners asking for their relatives to bring them little birds and canaries and things so that they could have them too this is in the 1920s 1930s so the rules were more lax i guess you could say back then and so he ended up taking in all of these birds and canaries and various types of birds and he, and he had a third grade education and he began reading in the prison library wow. all about biology and physiology and wildlife and so forth. And he actually wrote two books and developed, a, um, created, invented some uh, cures for bird diseases that had stumped all the experts and wow. so forth and so yeah. on. The, yeah. the point being that his, his life had value and, right. and, and, and he, uh, something beautiful came out of his life. Right. And I know that for the hard subject matter that this movie deals with, mental illness, it's a hard, tough subject. Um, we're talking about human beings who are suffering, you know, in right. this way. And who, for their own sake, they need our love and acceptance and human touch. But they also have something to give us. And we must never forget that. Uh, sure. I speak to my son twice a day, hmm. morning and evening, every day. Every day we talk, and of course I visit him as well, but not every day. Sure. And and we, um, you know, it's 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 a beautiful thing that I'm able to do that, and but it's also uh, painful. Yeah, and that, that's that uh, I can't be with him more. And that's uh, what you hope to, you know, basically let other people know that they're not alone in their pain that's right <clears throat> you know through this movie that uh you know you have you have an experience and you'd like to convey that <clears throat> in a way that would let them know there's hope i mean you found hope in the midst of all your pain all your struggling and I so it's, it's 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 got a i think it's a movie with great redemptive value yeah you know just that that god is able to to somehow make a way and and uh, hold us up yes you know during those hard times that's right chris we're in about a half an hour and we're going to probably start bringing this to a close we just want to remind everyone if you are uh either on our live broadcast today or uh watching the replay later i have noticed that there are quite a few people going out and watching the replay later uh, on the views uh, so uh, if you're watching this later just want to remind you i'm here with uh, chris cruzen we're talking about the puzzle factory the movie and uh, we're talking about the the need for funding and a little history on chris's other movies that he's produced and what i've heard so far chris you say is you know, uh, you wouldn't have been able to make any of the movies you made had God not somehow made a way where it seemed like there no, was no way. You know, uh, sometimes at the midnight hour, sometimes you had to do what you could do. You know, you had to make that phone call. Yeah. Uh, you know, early in the what you know, had, had you not made that phone call, would the funding have been there? I don't know. But uh, you, God impressed you, or you did it. And so sometimes we have to do our part, and I Absolutely. think that's I think that's what we're doing here 
with this live broadcast is, is a part of you yeah. doing your part to yeah. let somebody out there know yeah. there's a need. That's and right. all we can do, I think, with, with those kind of things is do what God has told us to do or asked to do. We lay it on the table for somebody else to, mm -hmm. to consider. Mm -hmm. Is God speaking to you about mm -hmm. this? And and then from there, it's in God's hands, right. isn't it? No, absolutely. Yeah. And with the Puzzle Factory specifically, I've written the screenplay. We've actually shot a couple of scenes for the film this past winter. Yeah. Uh, we have a beautiful pitch deck. The, the trailer. If you haven't watched the trailer, go out to the Puzzle Factory uh, Facebook page and watch that trailer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And... I, what, I'm, what I want to say is that I'm, I'm not going to stop trying to make this movie, but I'm also aware that apart from God, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I don't have $2 million right. to make the movie. That's number one, right. obviously, that would keep me from doing it. But it's in my heart to do it. It yeah. truly is. And, and there is a, I'd just say, a certain... Uh, sadness that I do sometimes feel, if I'm to be honest, yeah. when I think, you know, what if the funding doesn't come through? I, you know, I, I um, if, if the funding doesn't come through, then I don't make the movie. And, mm. and, I, and I kind of scratch my head and say, but how can that be? It's, I believe the movie is meant to be, but, you know, a part, there's a verse in the, in the scriptures, several, I think of John the Baptist who said, uh, when he was preparing the way of the Lord and saying, I must decrease and he must increase, the Lord must increase. He said, a man can receive nothing unless it's given him from heaven. And so that's number one. And I believe, I mean, I, I can't, I can't make this movie without God's blessing and favor. And, right. and I know that may sound really, really strange to some of you watching this who are atheist or agnostic, hmm. or you don't really have a close relationship with God. Maybe you're sort of culturally sure. religious and, and you don't, you don't ask for God's help with anything. Right. Right. And I, I get that. I was there. I've been there, done that. And, but I'm not that person who takes that approach. My approach is, Lord, first of all, what do you want? Right. And Lord, I'm feeling this. Would it please you if I were to do this? Sure. Yes, it would, son. Yeah. Well, then, Lord, here, here we go. I'm setting out to do this because I feel it has your blessing. Yeah. And then I create this screenplay. Right. And I create this teaser trailer, which right. is online. Right. And I create a team and we have momentum. But... Apart, this leads me to my second verse where Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Don't right. get it mixed up. Sure. You're not the vine with me being the appendage. Right. I'm the vine. You are the branches. Right. And I'm glorified if you bear much fruit. Right. But don't forget that you can do nothing apart from me. I love that. Yeah. I yeah love because that. you draw your life, you draw your sap, your life force from the vine. You know, I was thinking about it, Henry Blackaby's book, Experiencing God. And one of the things I remember about that is a lot of times we start out in life, you know, even as Christians, we can say, I want to do something and God, you bless it. And mm -hmm. instead of saying, God, where are you working? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to come and join you where you're working. And I really think this, I think your passion, your burden is God wants to heal broken hearts. Exactly. He's, he's out there. He's trying to mend people's lives. He's trying to help give them understanding. He's trying to he's trying to help them to know that he's there for them and wants to give them hope. And this movie is like you saying, "Okay, God, you're working out here. I want to step into that, and I want to join you in your efforts and use my skills and my talents." And I think that kind of brings us full circle, yeah. you know, into ambition and you know, doing yes. it for the glory of God. Yes, that's right. That's so, right. That's right. This it's it's not about ego yeah. any, anymore. Yeah. It was at one sure. time. I'd be the first to tell you it was. And maybe there's an A-list actor out there that has a family member that, um, you know, they maybe they've been through this struggle, and you know, an A-list actor costs yeah. money, and you know, maybe maybe the A-list actor says you're looking for you're looking for two million dollars, but maybe the A-list actor says, you I'll know, do it at scale. I'll do it at scale. Yeah, yeah. you know, I'll I'll, I'll 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 contribute. I'll help out. You know, so who knows how. This is always all going to work out, you know. Yeah, and if you want to know who our wish list of A-list actors is, 
send us an email and yeah. we'll tell you. Yeah. We'll tell you who we're looking at. Yeah.